Hi and welcome to another episode of A Walk to Remember. My name is Dwayne Baker Anderson and I'll be your host as we explore the truths and the myths of postpartum depression. Uh, in our first episode we talked about how you are not alone if you're going through a postpartum depression journey. Uh, you're not taking it alone. You have many many people around you who are there to help uh, as well as a lot of other people who you may or may not know who are going through the same kind of a situation uh, in their own lives. Uh, just doing some basic math, it looks to be like somewhere around 700,000 families in Canada and the U.S. go through postpartum depression in one way or another every single year. Uh, so you're not alone in that journey. Now, what I want to do in this episode is to expand on that a little bit and uh, talk about creating an effective postpartum support network around yourself so that you do have help as you go through your postpartum journey. Um, when my family went through our postpartum experience uh, in 2008, uh, I was very fortunate uh, as one of the primary support people for my wife to have my own support network already set up. Uh, and that wasn't intentional. Um, it was just that I was already part of a very uh, amazing community that was there to to really help in uh, in many aspects of my life. I have uh, some great mentors. Uh, I have some great friends, and uh, they all kind of pulled together to make the experience a little bit more uh, easy to tolerate for me, and I know for my wife as well. Uh, she, of course, had her own network, but there was some overlap, and a lot of the people in my network were part of hers as well. Um, so I want to talk about uh, your support network and how to build one if you don't have one already. Um, now, there's great value in, in having a support network as you go through postpartum depression, either as the person who is uh, directly experiencing the symptoms, or you're a, a support person for a person who is going through postpartum depression. Uh, both, um, in both instances, it's really powerful to have a support network. Um, the value in it for you is that it can take a lot of stuff off of your plate. Uh, it can reduce the stress during your, your regular day. You can delegate uh, things to, to other people so that you can focus on getting well or really help somebody else focus on getting well. Uh, you can have somebody to talk to. You can have uh, professionals who know um, how to best treat the symptoms or, or things you can do to make things a little bit more palatable for you. Um, and the way I like to look at a support network is to start with the needs that you have right now. Um, I know that when my wife and I were, were experiencing our postpartum uh, journey to begin with, uh, there were a lot of things that, that we needed some help with. Uh, for instance, meal preparation. Um, when somebody, from my standpoint, when somebody that, uh, that I care for so much is struggling so much, food kind of, it was not really high on our priority. And uh, there were some people in my support network who decided to take that on for themselves and uh, who basically started a food train for us so they would supply meals uh, one frozen meal every day so that at least we would have a good dinner every single day. Uh, and that's kind of the, the thing that a support network can, can do for you directly uh, in just taking some stuff off your plate. They can also help with things like childcare. Uh, they can help with uh, things around the house. If, if, uh, if you're going through postpartum depression, it does sap your energy. So there are a lot of things that uh, you do in your everyday life normally that that you may not be able to do or you may not uh, want to f focus your energy on so that you can you can help yourself feel well so that's the the really the value of the support network and you can start to explore what do you need right now do you need somebody to talk to do you need somebody to uh, just be around somebody to to uh, give you some companionship during the time that you're spending if if you are alone during the day normally uh, do you need somebody to to help out with with your other kids if you do have other children uh, so those are things to consider when looking at your your postpartum depression uh, postpartum support network um, and that's that's basically what i did i looked at what is it that i need and uh, 
from there, I was able to build a list of people that, that I knew that would probably be able to help in those areas. And that would be the next area to look at is who do I know that will be able to help out with any specific need, whether it is childcare or food preparation or getting groceries or just uh, being there if you need somebody to talk to. Um, and so I made a list of those people um, and I matched them up with, you know, I think this pe person will be really good at this particular thing that I need help with. Uh, there's also uh, some other considerations when building your network. Who do you not want to include in, in your network? Um, I know that in our experience there were some people that have been around, they've been friends, there's people in our family who've, who've been there in the past uh, who we were having some, some trouble with right up front and uh, as when we, we had the birth of our daughter Kalina. And uh, some of those people probably weren't the best to have around in our support network uh, right at the beginning. Um, my parents were great. I uh, had, like I said, some, some friends that, uh, that really helped out. Some, some mentors who, uh, who I met through business, actually, who became some of the greatest uh, contributors to my support network. Uh, but there were some people that um, saw things differently than, than what I did or didn't, uh, didn't have empathy for the situation that uh, my wife and I were going through. And uh, so the things that they would say were not helpful. Uh, they thought that they were. Uh, a lot of the time, a lot of the people you don't want to include in your network are people who believe that they have your best interest at heart, but uh, who may not actually be, be helping in the way that they think they are. Um, and so uh, those are things to consider too, who not to put into your network. And I made a list of those people as well. Uh, and then after that, um, Setting boundaries and giving permissions for different things with people in your support network is very important. And so I came up with, uh, along with my list of the things that I needed, the people who were going to be included, um, what I would allow them to, to speak into, basically. Uh, there are some people who, for instance, are really good at child care. But uh, when they, they speak, they're not very empathetic. They don't really... Uh, feel for you in a way that is productive. Uh, and I'm not talking about sympathy, I'm talking about seeing the situation from, from your standpoint. Um, and so for those people, uh, it was really important for me to set specific boundaries. In that example where somebody is really good with childcare, that would be the role that I would, I would want them to play. And so when I asked them to be part of my network, um, that's what I would ask them specifically for. It's really important to be specific about what you're requesting and, uh, and specific about what is not going to be uh, permissible from that person. And uh, for some people it was important to lay all of that out and for other people uh, it was beneficial just to, to ask them to do something very specific. Uh, so those are other considerations when you're building your, your postpartum network. Um, the last thing that, uh, that really um, came to the forefront was how do I ask these people to become part of my network and to support me and my family while we were going through this journey. And so uh, that is something that, uh, that, that I thought about long and hard. Uh, and I realized I needed to be very specific. So in this previous example, I would say you know, Cynthia, I really need some help with childcare. Uh, Corey and I have been completely overwhelmed with her going through postpartum depression and all the things that come with it. Uh, would you be able to take our, our children for maybe one or two times for a couple of hours every week for the next month? So something very, very specific. Um, in some instances, uh, I wouldn't lay out that much information. Um, for instance, I could say to somebody, I really need somebody to, to talk to, somebody who's already ha already have my back in the past. You seem to have done that for a long time and I really appreciate that. If I need somebody to talk to over the next couple of weeks, would you be open to, to just coming over for a couple hours every week? Something like that. Um, and uh, I've actually created a booklet uh, to run through all of these different things. 
it's very simple it's only 12 pages and there's a few exercise in it I go through all of the things that I've talked about here in a little bit more detail uh, a couple of exercises to help you start building your network uh, you can get it if you go to my website at DwayneBakerHenderson.com. Uh, I'll put a, put a link in the description down below. Um, and uh, for the nominal fee of less than five bucks, you can you can have a a great tool on how to start building your network. Um, I encourage you to go and and take a look at that tool. Um, I think there's a great deal of value there for you. Um, also, in our next episode, we're going to uh, we're going to talk about a couple of things that feed into this as well. Uh, there's only really three things in our lives that we can have influence over, and so that's what I'm going to talk about in the next episode. Uh, if you found some value in this, please give it a like, uh, share it with other people who you know are going through something similar, or people who are going to be part of your network. Um, if you do need some help with uh, giving some people information about what postpartum depression is and how they can help you through your experience, refer them to my website as well. There's lots of information on there and there will be more and more as we go along. Um, have a great day, be well, and we'll see you in the next episode.